up, people? Uh, we're back. We're gonna fall some rings. It is the warmest day of the year so far, but I'm still gonna run the heater. Actually, I'm gonna run the big heater because I'm sick of the cold. All right, I got these in a while ago. Actually, I had a box before this. I tried following rings and I damaged a couple of rings. So I'm gonna try to show you what I did and what not to do so you don't damage your rings. But uh, show, you, show you what rings I got. I got another box. And I'll leave a link for these down below, naturally. Oh, they already came open. Four one eight eight five nine CP. They come oversized. Um, these are just cast iron rings, nothing fancy. Um, I won't be pushing high horsepower or high heat or full race motor. But if you're just doing a street rebuild, these are good enough. Um, but if you're doing a full race motor, you might want uh, steel rings or uh, like a special. Co uh, I think they make. Uh, I kind of forgot the coating that they make for steel rings, but they make all kinds of rings. You might have to do something exotic, but it means it's going to cost more. These are pretty cheap. Um, two boxes are cheaper than really high performance rings, but you know, there's trade offs. So I'm going to finish up filing or uh, start filing the ones I messed up and uh, show you what I messed up on. I'll show you. Uh, how to file them pretty much or uh, how I'm doing it. Well I guess we can start uh, what we're aiming for. Uh, these are the different um, thou times let's see how, how can I say this that many thousands times the cylinder bore and that's our gap what it should be so for our application I'm gonna go for six and six and a half um, you want the second ring a little bit bigger something about uh like the um, expansion you don't want it trapped between the two rings and flutter around so you want the second ring a little bit bigger uh, correct me if I'm wrong but um, that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna go six thou for the top ring um, it is quite a bit big uh, people go bigger some people go just a stock ring gap which I think it's closer to four but since we're going boost, I'm going to go for the 6,000 times bore. That's You could use that for uh, the 6 liter or 5.3, but that's what I'm aiming for. And um, for these, I got my feeler gauges over here. I got them all laid out in order. Um, I'm going to do the second ring first for all the cylinders, and then I'm going to come back and do the top ring. For the second ring, we're going to do... 24 thou and a half. So I got my 24 thou right here. This should slip in there quite easily, and then I want the 25 to slip in there, but really tight. That's what I'm aiming for. And uh, so let's uh, go ahead and file a second ring. All right, cool. Uh, you could find these uh, ring filers on Amazon, eBay, Summit, Jags, wherever. But uh, I kind of don't like it just because. Um, I don't know if you can see. There's a little bit of a wobble in the wheel. And so uh, it kind of shutters the ring back and forth, which I kind of don't like. So I can't really recommend a ring filer like this unless uh, maybe you're going to have some luck and grab one and get some more wheels and swap them out. And uh, maybe, maybe you won't have that wobble, but. There's that wobble in this one. I'm borrowing this one. And uh, there's usually a little handle that goes in right here. But uh, he had an Allen wrench, but I took that out and I threaded just a little uh, bolt in there with a nut on it. And then just use a 3 8 It's a 3 8 nut on right there. And then I just turn it with a drill. I also put a little line on the socket right there so uh, I use that as a little bit of a guide and I kind of found out with like my pressure of the finger onto the ring and then how many turns this is it's roughly like 50 turns for one thou uh, for the with the feeler gauge which you know it's, it's a lot of turns but you can creep up creep up on it 
Um, so, what I did for a big mistake, um, I kind of turned the drill really fast, so uh, I kind of wanted to have it where I can actually see the line and was able to count it, even though if I wasn't counting it, I would be able to count it <laughs> just to see how many turns, if that kind of makes sense. So if you can, uh, if you're turning it and you can, can't even like see that line turning around, you're kind of going too fast. And that's where I had that problem and I kind of broke off like the molly coating on the top ring. Maybe the second ring won't be that bad, but uh, probably be best just to go slow and take your time and not have to buy a second box like I did. Because I bought a second box because I wasn't happy with that chip molly coating and I just got a second set just in case I go over, which they're a little bit cheaper rings, which you probably do, but if you have expensive rings, um, you kind of are kind of screwed, but uh, I think the expensive rings you're able to buy one ring at a time, which I guess that's a positive. So, what I did first with these rings, um, this has a little hook on the ring. That actually goes down, so I'm going to file it the way it goes into the cylinder, and what I'll do is... Uh, Actually, I will flip it around. Center line is on the right side. And I'll actually clean up just that ring face for whatever the filer has. So I'll do that quick. That's only half cleaned up. I think I'll leave it at that. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But I'll leave it at that. It has the outer edge cleaned up. And now I'll clean up the other edge. Um, these rings are, let's see, undersized or oversized, however you want to, however you want to see it. But uh, they're a little closed in, a little more than uh, they should be. So I know this for a fact. You can always check your rings before you start filing them. But I'll clean up the other edge, and then we'll take it to the motor, and then uh, check the gap. All right, now we got a ring. Um, you're gonna have some burrs on here. I'll quick show you how to, oh, I'm taking off the burrs. Um, also, probably do it on a bench instead of over your motor. But really, I just flex the ring like that. I'm also using a little uh, uh, honing stone. I think this is a uh, 400. Nothing too aggressive. Just gonna kind of put a little chamfer on there, just so you can't feel it with your finger. Also, um, when we're grinding this, uh, we're just gonna do one leg, probably the right side. So this side right here. That's because. That's because you probably should, or you're recommended, uh, say this. But also, I found out that if I grind this one leg, deburr it, I only have to deburr this one side, and every time you're just gonna be deburring one side when you check it, because you're gonna be uh, deburring it multiple times. But once you got all the burrs off, now we're gonna stick it into our cylinder. Um, this is number two. And then we're gonna check our gap. Push it down. You've probably seen this a thousand times. I'm gonna take a piston, but I have a ring to stop it. So I got uh, the old second ring on there. Push it down. Now we'll grab one of our feeler gauges. We'll start with. Number 16. That one goes in there, no problem. We'll try 19. That one goes in there. We'll just shoot up to 25. That one does not go in there. So we are somewhere in the middle. Go to 21. That one goes in there. 
23. Or that was 22. That was 22. 24. 24 does not. So 23. We're right at 23. We just gotta go pinch more. And we'll just ease up on it and then uh I'll probably be right back when it's done. All right, I got right where I want it. Here's my uh, 24 feeler gauge. You can see that. And the feel I really want for it, since I'm aiming for 24 and a half, is I have the 24. This goes in there pretty good. And then I got my 25. Goes in there, but it's pretty hard. So I'm gonna do the rest like that, and then we'll do the top ring. Oh yeah, another tip. Um, once in a while after you get done grinding, um, hold it up to the light and push, his, push the gap together and uh, check if they're square to one another. Um, you might have like a pie looking shape, and if you have a pie looking shape, uh, that's not good. So you have to reassess how you're grinding it. Um, Square it up and hopefully you didn't take too much and uh, if you did you might be in my predicament, but Go slow make sure you don't get that pie shape and then um, Keep them square, but uh, I do have all the second rings done and now I will do a top ring and then uh, close out the video All right, here's our top ring. Um, this is what they look like in the box. I got a white side and red side I don't know why they do that but uh, I will give a quick show of uh, what the gap at is actually at, uh, fresh out of the box. So take the ring, squeeze it in there. And I'll take my piston, pop it down. I don't think I showed the second ring gap, but uh, I will do the top ring. I will grab a 16th thou. Let's see if 16th thou fits. It almost goes, that's pretty tight. Fifteen. Uh, that's pretty tight. Goes in the top but not all the way down. And fourteen. That goes all the way down. So these are roughly about 14. We gotta open them up about eight thou, eight and a half thou. So I'll take this to the grinder and then um, same thing as the first one, go slow. And then uh, I'll show you one of my mistakes that you can avoid while deburring. Well, before I show you uh, how you should file them or uh, put a stone and deburr them, but this is my mistake. I couldn't let this pass. I don't know if you would let this pass. Let me know in the comments if you would. Um, if you could see that little, you can see my giant finger in there, that little, kind of like a little edge in there, kind of like it got knocked out. Well, that's the molly coating in there. And I, yeah, I'm doing hand gestures. You can't even see me over here, but uh, it kind of blew out that edge over there and I just can't let that pass. That's just from uh, filing or uh, if you take a stone, you go the wrong direction. I barely even nudge it to the side. I think on the, yeah, they're both about the same size, but even on the ring filer, one was on the ring filer, one was filing. So that's why you gotta go slow. You're gonna knock out that molly coating. Also, uh, this is a 25 thou feeler gauge. Just for reference, that's how big it is. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, it's really hard to get on camera. You gotta really zoom in. I wish I could take a picture of my camera. It looks kind of ridiculous, but it's barely any. Except I just can't let that pass. I had to buy another box. Like I said, uh, if you would have let that pass, let me know. But I don't know how big of a deal it is. I want this motor to run pretty good. 
even though I'm cutting some quarters here and there, but yeah, so I'll get to deburring the filed ring. There, right, here's the ring that's freshly uh, filed. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I think I showed you on the second ring how to file them, but on the top ring, what I should've did was just go like this. Probably not over your motor, of course, but for demonstration purposes only. It's kinda, gonna kinda look like a chamfer, but you don't really wanna put a chamfer on there. As long as you can't take your fingernail and get it caught, you should be fine. Do the other edge. Then the other edges are uh, just like the second ring, but I'll do the rest of those and then uh, we'll wrap it up. There we go. I got all the rings done. I got them in these bags right here and I got them labeled. Um, you could leave them in the cylinders. That's what uh, my buddy told me, but I like uh, bagging them more. So we'll get to these when we start putting the rotating, rotating assembly in, but uh, that'll be after we paint the block. Uh, quick clean up, get all the oil passages cleared out. So right when we paint the block, the rotating assembly is ready to go in. We also gotta check our bearing clearances. Um, I did organize my bearings pretty good, except I bought new bearings. So, we'll take a look at those when we put the rotating assembly in, but uh, yeah, we got the rings gapped. And if you want a, another reference of what I gapped them at, top ring, second ring, and then uh, oil ring untouched, of course. But uh, I'll leave a link for these rings down below. I'm not gonna link the ring filer because man, I, I don't like that thing. But uh, yeah, so I'll see you next in the next video and uh, have a good one.